A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you are having a pleasant day. It's great to be back again this week with another episode of the Strata Talk Show. With that, I would like to welcome everyone to the 66th episode of the Strata Talk Show brought to you by the Excel Academy of Real Estate. To our new viewers, in this talk show, we'll be discussing issues and cases related to the management of stratified developments with various industry professionals. And joining us today, we have Mr. Kwan Yu Wai, who is the Director of PKN Building Solutions, to speak on the topic of facade inspection and maintenance. If you have any questions for Mr. Kwan, feel free to leave them in the Facebook comment section below, which we'll address in the Q&A section at the end of the show. Uh, without further ado, join me in welcoming Mr. Kwan Yu Wai. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone all the audiences uh, out there online uh, very good afternoon uh, okay uh, just a brief introduction about myself i speak about interflow leakage i speak about ema 504 also spoke about building pathology uh, more indoor mode as well as water tank inspection and now i'm speaking about facade inspection so before that i'm also a technical committee in cis 7 uh, the 2021 version and as well as uh, the soon to be uh, code of practice and standard in water print in under Jakarta Standard Malaysia. Uh, besides that, I'm also an expert witness in tribunal and court, uh, a certified infrared person, and then uh, also a certified non-destructive inspector for concrete. Okay, uh, so let's go into the main topic today. Fasa. Fasad, some country uh, use the word building enclosure. Some country, yeah, just use the word external wall. Basically, it provides uh, the aesthetic value of the building to us. Uh, most importantly, it also separate our internal climate to the external climate, which uh, protect us against the heat, solar glare, rain, and uh, rainwater and wind. Also, it also protects us from the animal and tempest. It gives us security and as well as uh, sound insulation. So facade is the first thing we see when we go to a building. That's why it's very important. And uh, aesthetic value is uh, so far been kept the most important part, you know, uh, for this, this building facade. But recently, we have issue with facade. It, on... Uh, 20th of May 2023, a flat in Lok Yu uh, KL. The wall has been sucked out and the debris spread uh, to the ground floor. And luckily, no injury and mortality was reported. In this, another case, three months later, on the 16th of October, uh, August, Kuchai Entrepreneur Park have another issue whereby. The concrete beam, as you can see uh, from the picture, concrete beam actually dropped down. And uh, this damage, this case, in this case, 10 cars were damaged. Luckily, no injury and mortality uh, was reported. Really, how blessed uh, our country is, you know. So, but just to share with you, this thing, we are not alone, okay? Uh, in Singapore, a country which is known to be the first world in Southeast Asia. Uh, on the 22nd of August 2021 in Bedok, uh, HDP HDB apartment in uh, Bedok also suffered from similar damage like ours in Kucha Entrepreneur Park, whereby the beam also collapsed, you know, uh, very badly. Okay, luckily, uh, no injury was reported. In another case, one uh, just slightly earlier, 30th of December, New Year Eve, okay, in Bedok, a wall collapsed and it fell down to the walkway. So we are not alone, in fact. Okay, this could be so deadly. Anyone that passed by the area will be subjected to injury or even mortality. 18th of June. 2018, Pasir Ris, Singapore. A decorative uh, 
facade uh, element or the wall, the creative wall, actually fell down. And luckily, no, no injury reported. But this case is different. This one is in 2022 in Chicago, USA. Severe injury was reported. Imagine the stone. Oh my God. The weight of the stone that dropped down eventually injured a, a pedestrian very badly in this case. And on 17th of December, 2019, New York City, this cobble, this piece of cobble at the center, okay, fell down. Not only one piece, actually two pieces fell down. Someone was really killed. And based on uh, what the late Mr. Crawford, uh, an ASTM, ASTM stands for American Society for Testing and Material, uh, who specialized in facade, reported that in the past few years, there are more than 30 people got killed, 81 people got injured due to facade failure, falling object from the facade. That has caused, uh, yeah, life has caused injury that no one should should be should take it lightly so as such i'm organizing this talk to alert to the property management uh, community as well as facility management community to look into this seriously because any failure from the facade is deadly so let's look into what is the normally falling things that, that come out from the facade among the major one is the stone stone uh, there, are, there are different ways to install stone, okay? If uh, the stone are installed like the first photo using pin, I have personally witnessed this uh, in in KL, okay, in Sri Kambangan. A office building covered fully by natural stone have their stone falling down piece by piece, you know. And I was the one who went up with a uh, sky leaf to remove the falling stone. And uh, from what I observed, they actually, uh, in, sorry, in the first, uh, the way that the first picture, uh, which I have uh, put in to illustrate to you, without the bracket, just the pin alone, whereby the, the other side of the pin actually inserted to the wall with epoxy glue. Wow. Uh, so dangerous okay but if if the stone is installed on the second manner the one the photo at the center this will be much safer looking at the way it's installed you see and let's say uh cobblestone or tiles they are mainly installed but using mortar only so uh you know stone and tiles is among the most common thing that that fall down okay so let's go to the second, the next slide. And of course, cladding is among the very common one. Uh, less problem with cladding because of the clipping system. But uh, I have also personally came across in KL, in Santo, some of the buildings in Santo that have uh, falling pins uh, from the cladding. So yeah, uh, we are not alone, even for some very prestigious uh, building. And of course, uh, curtain wall is also a very important part of, of uh, this facade. There are three types of curtain wall, okay? Stick system, whereby all the uh, aluminum strip as well as the glasses and the bracket were installed piece by piece at the side. This is among the most common type of uh, curtain wall in Malaysia. Uh, the wood of this curtain wall is it doesn't have built-in drainage system so sometimes if any water that managed to seep into the building will will eventually appear easily internally because of the thin layer of the glass and we have semi unitized system whereby uh, the half fabricated panel is which is fabricated at the site are uh, installed in the uh, sorry fabricated in the factory are uh, installed with uh, by intensive labor uh, at the site 
you know, uh, this is uh, called semi-unitized system. But full, fully unitized system is the, the panel has been fully fabricated at, in the factory and install it at the site. Uh, this is the fastest way of installing uh, the cladding wall or the, sorry, the curtain wall at the site. But most of the time is spent in the factory and QAQC is very well done. Uh, this is among the the system used in Manara TM. Okay. And of course, window. Plenty of windows, sliding, uh, push out type, uh, okay, hopper and all types. But the issue is with window, uh, window that is fabricated with aluminium or metal have their problem where at the joint because expansion and contraction at the joint which is assembled perpendicularly over the years it tend to have a gap due to the, the thermal stress you know and timber will have another problem because it will rot over time due to our uh, humid weather okay so far the most complaint come from subframe window subframe window have a piece of metal installed uh, at the side so that the fabricator can take the measurement correctly uh, when the fabricated aluminum frame is, is uh, installed at site, it will be screwed directly to the subframe and uh, without any gap, without any gap for expansion and contraction for any movement. So uh, thirdly, there all there are also window frame nowadays that come with whip hole. Whip hole is something that you know, it actually allowed the water that managed to seep into the window frame to be discharged out systematically. And of course, the biggest problem with a window is a sealant. Sealant is something that is not durable. It needs maintenance over the years. And sealant comes with organic and inorganic sealant. Organic sealant is made by a petrochemical product and inorganic sealant is made by silicate. Silicate uh, means uh, it actually came from the sand. And uh, well, organic literally it come from the petroleum. Under the hot sun in Malaysia, the tendency to fail is uh, faster for the one with petrochemical because petrochemical is not ultraviolet stable. Yeah, naturally. Glasses. Well, uh, we we have low E glasses nowadays. Uh, known to be green green because it can retain heat. But uh, from my own experiment, whereby I measure the temperature of different type of glasses in Malaysia, and I discover the heat is quite detrimental to, to us because it's too hot, you know. We, we do not need to retain heat. Instead, we need to reflect heat. As a result, from my study, I discover reflective uh, glasses is more effective to maintain the internal to become colder. Anal glass, tempered glass, and laminated glass. It has different implications when it comes to failure because anal glass, when it breaks, the debris is very sharp and it can injure people. Tempered glass, on the other hand, are strengthened glass. These glasses, these glasses are important uh, because it can allow people to step on it, you know, and uh, it also gives a good security. But when it breaks, it is broken into thousands of small pieces. Uh, not detrimental, but yeah, can cause minor scratches. Uh. Laminated glass, on the other hand, uh, it actually has one layer of glue in between uh, two pieces of glasses. So when it when it breaks, the glue actually will stick the the glass debris, and no no debris will fall out. That is a good part. Uh, of the laminated glass and it is known as safety glass. Okay. Well, now we come to uh, the session whereby uh, we ponder on why the facade fail. You see, facade, our building is supported by pillar, the, the pyre that drive down to the soil up to the bedrock. This is one of the foundation system. Of course, there are foundation system with piles, 
that depend on the frictional friction of the soil to sustain the load. Okay, and now for some small structure uh, foundation, shallow foundation uh, will use with big footing, okay, to distribute the load. And our building uh, also structurally, it transfer the load to the foundation. Anything that shake the foundation can shake the whole building and hence crack the facade. Uh, on the other hand, our soil also have water, underground water. Sometimes the underground water can be so intense and I witnessed by myself again, okay? It, when we punch a hole on the floor, uh, especially at the basement. I encountered a case by myself, okay? Six feet of water will shoot out from the floor. And that building, because of uh, the intense groundwater, the slab actually become lifted and become wavery, you know? So when we drive our car, we, our car will, will, will move slightly. And the whole building crack, especially the facade. It's so obvious, you know? Okay, wind load. Wind load is uh, nothing very serious in Malaysia, but the higher the building, the risk of wind loading is higher. So, um, and wind nowadays has become intense too due to climate change. Soil erosion uh, for hillside building, this is a very detrimental thing. So, because soil can also push our foundation, uh, during the erosion okay and our building facade also subject to the carbonic acid in the air subject to the expansion and contraction from the sun so uh, plenty of reason why our facade actually started to dilapidate next okay according to the world bank group asian development bank uh, assessment on climate change malaysia is among the worst so uh, by 2090, 90, okay, the temperature is expected to rise by 3.11 degree. And I understand for every degree increase of the uh, temperature, the wind will increase in intensity substantially. So these are the, the area with heat wave, mainly in the urban area. Uh, some are in the in the suburban as well as the rural area as well okay so uh when our building is subjected to heat extensive uh, heat it you know material expand when heated shrink when cold this is a very simple science that we studied but too many years ago okay but our building do we have a mechanism to cater for such expansion and contraction Let's elaborate it. Let's uh, discuss it in further detail. Okay. So water, soil. And we discover more leaf pit is having the groundwater uh, uh, ingress nowadays. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, and you, as you can see in the map uh, under in the peninsula Malaysia, well, KL will be subjected to more rain soon. Okay. And because of the rain, the flooding, the flash flood is affecting our soil. The building with shallow, shallow foundation will subject to sediment due to the soft soil and the intense pressure of the groundwater can sometimes push our building, uh, especially the floor slab, uh, to become uneven and cause crack to our building. And uh, of course, our combustion uh, from the vehicle as well as the from the factory cause more acid rain to to de to spoil our building okay in high com according to the meteorological department of malaysia uh, the first few first five minutes of rain the ph was two ph2 you know it's actually very acidic you see so uh, of course when the rain uh, prolonged it will be diluted but the point is if in the early morning when condensation happen actually condensation will create small quantity of water exposed to high level of acidity in the air 
and hence cause a lot of corrosion to our metal and our masonry surfaces, you know. Meantime, uh, correct contamination to concrete also happen in our swimming pool. Why every two days we need to replenish water into the swimming pool? Because it evaporates and is 2.5 times heavier than air. As such, it always float on the concrete that when it encounter water, it becomes uh, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid can corrode gold, you know. So reinforcement steel bar and waterproof cannot cannot survive in their presence. And salt spray, sea spray, is covering up to 25 kilometer from the coastal side. Actually, uh, is subjected to uh, sea spray because the chloride due to the wave the wave movement and the solar energy uh, given by the uh, the sun the salt ion the chloride ion will start to migrate to the inland up to 25 percent and that's why many years ago my father told me uh, do not buy car that was used at the seaside because it corrodes by very badly you know the body will corrode very badly uh, so due to the exposure to the chloride contamination and heat wave heat wave uh well, our building discharge a lot of hot air due to the aircon system. So uh, our our vehicle also emit a lot of hot air. All this can cause a lot of hot air in the city. Well, when the hot air go up due to the the temperature, due to the okay, when it when it move up, it actually attract the wind, and it actually energize the wind. So uh, all that can cause stronger wind and in the urban area. Meantime, imagine the empty piece of land with two buildings. The wind can travel easily, okay? But if the same piece of land is occupied by 200 buildings, the wind have to travel much faster because of the obstruction. And due to the longer distance, because if they have, they have to travel faster, otherwise, a vacuum will be created, which is impossible in reality. So when they travel so fast, the wind is accelerated and energized again. Okay, so urbanization also causes uh, more stronger wind, stronger wind, you know, nowadays. And after the Aceh mega earthquake, Peninsula Malaysia is no longer earthquake free. In 2006 to 2007, there were around there were around 13 earthquakes with richer scale 2.5 to 3.5 in Bukit Tinggi, Bentong, with epicenter in Malaysia. So now the earthquake uh, and the second highest risk of this earthquake is center KL. Center KL. So uh, nowadays, occasionally we can hear people saying their building started to move and such movement can crack building and uh, look at the photo that i show uh, at the upper side uh, upper right this is a real photo from a secondary school in bentong whereby the slab has cracked after the earthquake now our 2022 version of uniform building bylaw has specified new building to be earthquake resistant but so far there is no guideline when it comes to earthquake retrofitting for existing building, I understand from uh, Prof. Professor Asan Annan, the Japan Standard are working on the uh, guideline on earthquake retrofitting for existing building. So I urge you for the time being, uh, please buy insurance uh, against earthquake risk uh, because at least you have an insurance coverage if in the event of anything happen. Okay. Okay, and our building. Our building used to be having thick wall, fewer window. You know, window is something that, according to a, a building scientist in North America, window uh, can be classified to leaking window and soon to leak window. <laughs> Somehow, window will leak, you know, due to the way it is fabricated as well as uh, the exposure to the environment. So, uh, pitch roof, 
no longer we have a pitch roof for our modern building. Now we have tin wall, curtain wall, flat roof, double glazing glasses, and a number of composite material with active m and &E system, ventilation system. So the building technology has made the building so thin and susceptible to any leakage. Because the thinner the wall, the more the lower the tolerance to leakage. Any problem, any mistake, or any fall on the wall will cause water ingress. Okay. Imagine if your wall is so thick, any water ingress, a uh, small quantity of water that enter into the wall will be will evaporate. You know, uh, when the sun uh, sunny day come, will evaporate and it doesn't didn't I mean uh, doesn't manage to seep into the building. So on the other hand, imagine our facade. Our facade. Okay, I go back to the previous slide. Facade, the external wall with concrete, with brick, with metal frame, with timbers. When it under the heat exposure to the heat, it will expand and contract. It will expand and contract uh, differently and due to different coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay, so imagine your building expand and contract. Different material is expanding and contracting at different length and speed. Over the years, without any separation in between different material, well, it will crack. And our engineer is well aware of this. And they have put this type of expansion joint in the bridges. But somehow, expansion joint can be hardly found uh, in some of the new buildings nowadays. And I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So according to the building research establishment in UK, okay, temperature induced size change, moisture induced size change are the major issue that can cause the building to crack. Imagine without any uh, joint, any separation, any compression, any bending will cause the crack. Any rotation, any expansion contraction, you know, as as illustrated by the photo here. Without a separation, it will crack, okay? So let's say the expansive displacement, the, the diagram second and the third diagram. With separation joint, anything will, you know, any expansion and compression, the gap will counter for it. So the building will not crack. And International Council for Research and Innovation in Building and construction. This is a professional body supported by United Nations uh, in uh, Europe. Okay, they have done a lot of study on uh, this defect in masonry wall, and uh, they know they discover. Of course, uh, if anything go wrong with the foundation, uh, you will have problem with the facade, and the foundation can also be affected by root. And for especially for rough foundation, whereby there is, it's like a floating floating ship, uh, okay, but a floating house with rough foundation. The anything go wrong with the building it will cause the building to crack as well. And the bigger the root, you know, uh, the the more it can affect the the foundation. And if you chop off the tree, the rotting rotting root inside the soil will cause cavity and water ingress, and it will have another problem. So as a result, do not plant your tree too close to your building. I discover now this uh, major plant, the, you know, the one that have very strong root, like the one illustrated in the uh, diagram here, has been planted too close to the building, and it caused crack. Okay, so removing it will cause another problem. First, do not start planting too many trees. But unfortunately, trees has been uh, so critical to some people. Even trimming the tree will be subjected, subject the property manager into question nowadays. I hope uh, my audience can understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. And I, of course, a deflection to the 
top slab also can cause the crack, you know, that come with different pattern. Heat induced crack, especially on a flat roof. This is so common in Malaysia. I think none of the flat roof can survive this, uh, you know, and the crack will surely happen. Uh, well, uh, this can be prevented if it has been, uh, there have been more care taken on it. Lah. Okay, and uh, when the building have moisture shrinkage, it will also crack at the center. And uh, figure 2.12, this will typically happen when the wall is subjected to moisture as well as heat. And this is very common for wall facing the east and west. And too much of expansion and contraction without any joint, the external wall will start to bounce and collapse. So uh, I would like to share a real case with you, okay? Uh, in the upper diagram on the left, okay? It actually show a sketch of the building that we took the measurement of the temperature as well as a crack width. Uh, okay, there is a small staircase uh, on the right and we found a diagonal crack, a huge diagonal crack on this wall. So to prove what type of relationship this crack have to the temperature. I measure the temperature of the slab, okay, with a digital calibrated uh, digital thermometer. So from the top, from the bottom, we measure and we punch some hole beside the crack and measure with caliper every two hours for 24 hours. And we discover one of the location actually moved by 9 mm, you know, so, due to when the when the temperature varies, okay, especially when the rain come, it will expand the, the biggest, you know. So uh, that's why this crack is actually induced by heat, okay, and is dynamic in nature. It actually started to expand and contract due to the variation or changes in the temperature uh, of the slab, okay, and the consequence is. Firstly, the heat induced crack under the flat roof. Well, the flat roof they see the maximum solar energy. Okay. And the crack under the infrared imaging, you can see is actually horizontal, parallel to the slab. Okay. Next, the, uh, the, the lower slide. Uh, okay. Please refer to the infrared image. The like the horizontal line actually is made from PVC strip, okay? And this PVC strip have five times more uh, coefficient of thermal expansion as compared to cement. So over the years, it's expand and contract in different rate and it started to crack and has the cavity uh, and started to have the cavities that allow the water to enter. So under different time, uh, some of them, depending on the depth of the water, some of them remain blue color and some of them become hot spot. Uh, it all depends on the physics of water. Okay, that part will be uh, explained, has been explained in my previous uh, talk. Ah, this is a case whereby we can see the concrete slab has been heated up so obviously with the infrared imaging. Uh, here okay and this type of heat induced crack is is so detrimental and you can see how bad the such a new building around five years old in Penang has cracked so badly and imagine it is actually beside the sea this building is actually beside the sea you know any crack and any seepage will cause chloride contamination into concrete with accelerated corrosion to the reinforcement steel bar and at the bottom slide uh, photo, you can see the crack. This is actually a building in Cyberjaya, okay? So the horizontal piece of crack, the, the, the concrete debris is starting to fall and it can endanger the, the user of the building. Case, the second case, okay? Uh, in uh, this uh, residential building in KL, it actually have a cold joint. And this cold joint, nobody can solve it 
regardless of how many round of PU routing has been done. So, and I, I told the consultant, hey, I feel this is a heat induced crack and consultant wanted me to prove. So I did a similar thing, measuring the temperature on the top at the bottom, as well as the crack width. And we discovered one of the location moved by 5 mm. So uh, when the temperature changes, so actually we discovered from our forensic work, uh, a number of crack is actually dynamic in nature. And the uh, dynamic nature require elastic material. But uh, in this case, the consultant proposed to glue back the, uh, the cold joint with epoxy grouting. So we are looking forward to see the effectiveness of such method. Okay, case three. This is a real case in Bangsa, okay? Whereby, you, as you can see, the corroded reinforcement steel bar can be seen from the concrete, concrete beam. And this concrete beam, uh, okay, this corrosion, why the corrosion can cause spalling? When the reinforcement steel bar is subject to, to dampness or contamination, it will corrode. The anode and cathode cell will be formed. Uh, and then the corrosion is an electrochemical process that will continue, okay? So the, the reinforcement steel bar will start to expand in, in the uh, volume up to 620% of original size, cracking the concrete from inside continuously, okay, until it is fully corroded. Cracked concrete have no compression strength. Corroded reinforcement steel bar compromised in tensile strength. As a result, the structural performance dropped significantly, subjected to the le level of intensity of corrosion. And this is very common again in Malaysia due to our hot weather, which accelerate the corrosion, humid environment, you know, strong precipitation that give a lot of uh, conducive environment or factors that, that cause the corrosion to trigger. And worst of all, we have a lot of swimming pool so, and a number of swimming pool. Um, if no movement joint is constructed, it will have a tendency to crack very badly. And uh, any water, chlorinated water, be it from the chloride con algae control agent or salted water. Salted, uh, I mean, salted water is sodium chloride. So both are chlorinated water can, as, can trigger accelerated corrosion to the reinforcement steel bar and uh, crack the concrete rapidly and severely. So I urge you to look into this. And recently, okay, this is a case in Lok Yu. Based on the wind, uh, wind tunneling analysis software, we understand there are suction, high suction area, especially for high rise. Okay. And look at this diagram. The one, the arrow, the second arrow, actually show a high suction area at the center of the building. And this is happening to our building in Lok Yu, at the center of the building at the edge, you know. So uh, when the building edge enough, the bracket start to corrode, uh, then it make a perfect storm for the wall to be sucked out instead of blown in, you know. So in this case, it's actually sucked out, not blown in. So uh, very dangerous. Such a high high floor, you know, any debris that fall into the fall to the ground is that deadly. Uh, but luckily, no injury and mortality was re recorded. Leaking window, window sealant is not durable, and it will crack. A lot of missing, uh, a lot of cases with missing sealant or wrong gradient. Imagine the gradient at the bottom of the uh, window. If slope inward, it will leak forever. And as I mentioned, leakage uh, bring along the environmental pollutants that can trigger the acceleration of the building uh, corrosion. So tim rock, timber, wood, 
have their own problem whereby it rot under our type of weather. So all that. So what should a uh, JMB or MC do or MO do to upkeep the building in good repair as well as serviceable condition? The Section 21 of uh, Strata Management Act say is the JMB main function is to upkeep the building in safe and functional uh, condition. Straight Drainage and Building Act 1974 also say the building owner have the duty to make sure the public which is which is which has the access to the building is free from any condition which may endanger the life and the health of his employee and the member of public so what is the solution to all this okay in fact facade need to be inspected and monitored closely and mandatory facade inspection has been made in 1980s in new york city due to the uh, record of mortality and injury and in 2012 uh, hong kong has made it mandatory for facade inspection because uh, in the urban area in hong kong according to my hong kong friend if everyone come down to the floor there is not enough land for people to stand you know so imagine that the density of population any falling parts from the facade will be deadly will, will hit somebody you know and singapore have their uh, mandatory facade inspection for building above three floor uh each 10 years every seven years have to have a uh, inspection and inspection start from review of the service history the design okay of the building then it also include a visual survey as well as a visual survey to to identify the abnormality and a close-up inspection of selected uh, facade portion to be scrutinized and checked thoroughly and step three is to come up with a report so as you can see facade inspection has been made mandatory for some countries and perhaps it's time for malaysia who is uh who, who who is developing rapidly with so many high-rise mushrooming all around the urban area to consider such requirement for inspection so as a property manager if someone complained uh the structure crack or the the window leaks you know actually before i have all this type of uh, infrared imaging or in, uh infrared drone i used to find a way to inspect the leaking spot using selfie stick you know or using this type of camera a small camera which is not expensive that can be attached to any handphone and the third photo is actually the real image that i got using selfie stick you know so you can, can you see there is a crack line above the window here yes uh, at, at the bottom part and yeah this is some of the way that a property manager can do even though without hiring any any uh, external people at least at your level but beware of safety lah, okay because uh, if you uh, put your hand out from the window make sure the you are safe Make sure the handphone or is also safe <laughs> if it fell down too bad. Huh? So US being the first country with a mandatory FASA inspection in some of their state have the most guideline. They have uh, a few ASTM standard for different purposes. For instance, periodic inspection for FASA, for instance, uh, evaluation of water leakage on the FASA as well air leakage as well so different standard and they actually came up with a book some years ago uh, pertaining to facade inspection and repair okay drone has become a trend and because it's very convenient and safe uh, no no human is needed you know to to go up that high level uh, in if, if we have a drone so uh, beside ASTM America architecture 
Manufacturer Association also come up with guideline for spray test. And this spray test is so unique. Uh, when we manipulate the pressure that is uh, spray out, it can resemble the rain at different wind velocity, you know, different wind speed. So uh, by measuring the wind speed at the site at different time for, for a reasonably long period, we can set the pressure to a level similar to rain blown by wind you know, at that designated speed. So with infrared imaging, we can see how the water leak in and we can understand the leaking path easily using this method. Okay, I actually practice this. And infrared imaging, why we can use infrared to check uh, dampness or delamination? Okay, it's because as you can see okay, in this table, fresh water and air has much higher thermal capacity as compared to the other material. So as a result, as a result, we can easily use uh, infrared imaging to spot the abnormality, be it cold spot or hot spot. Uh, at different hours, it, the, the tendency is that this color will change at different hour, subject to the amount of solar energy received. Right? So as a result, we can use drone uh, infrared drone to inspect facade very economically and easily uh, and to identify the abnormal location for close range inspection later on. And uh, Hong, Hong Kong actually, uh, a professor in Hong Kong, uh, you have came out with a guideline for Hong Kong known as HKCI, Hong Kong Concrete Institute TM1, detection of building surface defect by infra thermography. Okay, Singapore standard also uh, encourage the use of infrared drone, but it also have got some guidelines on close range inspection, whereby some knocking or pull off test is encouraged or recommended in this uh, Singapore standard of inspection for PASA. Okay, especially if uh, some a uh, hot spot or abnormal spot is discovered, we do need to do at least some knocking tests on the spot to check the risk of delamination and falling uh, debris. And recently, I have done an uh, infrared in inspection uh, before painting work. The issue is this is a very old building, okay? And such old buildings have their waterproof have the, a number of services expired. Uh. So before they paint, the painter actually requests them to settle all the leaking issue because any leaking can nullify the warranty of painting. So as a result, I was requested to do infrared imaging for each, each unit facade, okay? So that I can come out with a, a report that can help them to issue Form 28. So uh, this is some of the example to share with you, okay? And of course, when you work at height, beware of the risk of falling. Uh, this is my man, Saifu, who can do abseiling and can check, you know, without a gondola or skylift. Some of the case, uh, we also erect scaffolding. We, we also check building uh, based on Singapore standard with gondola or sky leaf, uh, like what I show in these photos. Well, let's come to the preventive measure. If building have a lot of separation, any expansion and contraction will be counter or so to speak absorbed by this small gap, okay? And for your information, different author have different guidelines into the number of gaps. So there was no clear guideline. We have British standard uh, for this type of joints. And we also have European and uh, American standard, you know. But from my own experience, uh, inspecting building in Malaysia, I have discovered some building which satu joint pun tak ada, you know. Not even one single joint. Oh, you. And I can see it have 
crack everywhere. So how to repair? I also don't know. Building already in service. How to split it now? So, uh, and well, without the expansion joint, the building will not collapse. But it has a tendency to crack and and uh, allow water to seep into the building. Uh, there is the issue, okay? So, um, it's a gray area, which I'm still uh, one pondering on. Okay, so, okay, now, about the stone as well as the uh, tiles. We have Malaysia standard. And Malaysia standard say, if the external wall or floor is subjected to intense exposure to the solar energy as well as moisture, it needs to have a small gap. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever seen this in Malaysia? I have seen this in Malaysia in Daya Bumi complex, but not not a lot of other other buildings. Some building in Putrajaya, I have seen it, you know, but not enough in numbers, you know, in in the quantity of joints. So I still see uh, bulging or falling tiles or stone from external wall. Uh, but from the point of property manager, in the event that you have a chance to correct or to redo the tilings, please, please, you know, design and construct the, the expansion joint so that any expansion and contraction will not cause the stress that eventually cause the tile to pop up, you know, or, or delaminate. So, and... Okay, I have done an experiment um, in my own house with different type of material for roofing purpose. Okay, as you can see, some are torch membranes, some are single ply membrane with different colors. And we discover the white color membrane have a very strong uh, reflectance that can control the temperature of the of the flat roof, you know. And torch membrane, on the other hand, when I lift up the torch membrane, the base is actually hotter than the area without any, any membranes. You know. So torch membrane actually absorb more heat. This type of heat is ideal in Europe and North America, but not in Malaysia. It will cause our building to crack. And the, the lower photo on the, for the facade, as you can see, okay? Uh, external wall with dark gray and light gray color. Apparently, dark gray has got more heat. Visually, there are more cracks, you know. And uh, light gray has got less heat under the infrared. So, without the expansion and contraction, there will be less crack for area with dark, with light, lighter color. Hence, uh, there is a correlation that I can see about the colors as the material as well as the heat suffer from or, or absorbed by the building when it comes to concrete well uh kpkt have guideline or or recommendation you know when you handle or diagnose or repair concrete please refer to em1504 so the em1504 uh, evokes the diagnosis of concrete by non-destructive testing using scientific manner. It also uh, consider about the structural strength as well as corrosion. So uh, EM1504 in the nutshell, it says that the building need to have their structural performance restore, corrosion control and moisture control in their concrete repair practices. I've written an article about uh, EM1504 in my blog. So I urge you to have a look during your spare time. Okay. Earthquake retrofitting. Although there is no guideline, but uh, from the local council or, or the KPKT or JKR, but in fact, there are areas that is prone to movement, you know. Uh, typically, this the risky area will be the floor without wall especially the swimming pool deck, uh, the elevated swimming pool deck. 
that is the high risk area and I urge you to consider uh, strengthening it with earthquake retrofitting so that you can control the crack on your building. And uh, of course, when we come to repair of crack, bear in mind a lot of crack uh, is too expensive to know if this is a natural shrinkage crack or heat induced crack. So my principle is in the event that we need to repair crack, please use elastic material like acrylic paintable sealant. Okay, do the diamond cutting, routing, and then seal, seal it with uh, acrylic paintable sealant. Paint it with elastomeric primer, uh, okay, before you do the uh, finishing coat. Meantime, I also discovered using single ply membrane to bandage the horizontal crack line under the flat roof is very effective, you know, because uh, I actually removed the the falling concrete pieces, debris. I actually remove it, not even patching it back, you know. Instead, I use a single ply membrane and I install stainless steel bracket on top and below so that no water can seep through. Of course, I need to seal it with a uh, high performance sealant. Uh, and in this case, this is a one and a four row, a durable and permanent type of solution because it's very expensive to control the heat from the top. So I make the, the, the area that is subjected to the expansion and contraction under the flat roof to be elastic forever, you know. So move lah. You can move and it will be still uh, watertight. And in conclusion, there is statutory duty to maintain the building in serviceable condition and good repair. But the environment is changing. The construction technology is also changing. And some of this technology has not been localized or tested in local environment before it's adopted, you know. So, and we can see from my own experience that the movement joint, a number of them are missing. And uh, as such, the building is subjected to stress and uh, any failure is deadly. So as I urge the audiences, you know, prevention is better than cure, safety first. Drone has made facade inspection very efficient. Holistic and scientific approach is needed to maintain the building. And heat control with elastic material is very important to seal the crack, to maintain the building watertight without uh, with tolerance to further movement. So I leave it to the floor for question now. Uh, uh, Tuan, I finished my talk. Just in one hour time. Wow, very true, no? So I open to the floor for questions. Any question? Yeah, just to show you. This is my infrared drone. It have it actually have uh two lens, you know. It actually have two lens. One is uh I think you cannot see it clearly from the screen. Yeah. So uh it have it can take physical photo as well as uh infrared image, uh, you know, with, with the drone like this. So I do this type of infrared inspection uh for my customer. Yeah. So any question from the floor? Interesting. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kwan, for that talk. Uh, we have now reached the Q&A segment where you'll fully answer their questions. So for the first question, we have a question from Ms. Shikin Charo. Uh, what are the factors affecting the efficiency of maintenance? Uh, efficiency of maintenance. Okay, uh, there's a uh, paper, a scientific paper uh, done by a scholar in Malaysia, 
uh, in the Sokso building. And the conclusion is uh, at the floor level, building manager and technician is lacking of knowledge in maintenance and all. Bear in mind, bear in mind, structural engineers, they are trained to design, supervise and certify. They are not trained to uh, diagnose and repair. As such, diagnose, diagnosis and repair is actually new knowledge, you know. EM1504 was launched in 2011. 2011 to 2023 is just how many years? 12 years old. American standard for ACI 562, 2016. Uh, Australian standard for concrete repair, 2018. So these are all new knowledge that I urge the property manager have to have to learn. And I have written it in a very layman term in my articles in iProperty. And I think I've given a talk on this topic in Excel Academy as well, right? So I urge you to to pick uh, to learn up, you know, to have continuous learning, especially on the repair method, because uh, our engineer has been busy designing and uh, constructing. Only recently, in the past thirty years, globally, engineer realized, hey, our building is not as robust as we thought, you know. So they, that's why they started R and D in uh, repair diagnosis and repair so uh so please uh look back to my previous uh talk and my articles about concrete repair okay all right ready? thank you sir you can see of course it need to be backed by knowledge la. so uh now with technology things is being uh cheaper uh you know with drone even we have underwater drone nowadays you know for tank inspection so right. underwater drone is also not expensive. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on, we have a question from Ms. Nazdiana Nazaruddin. Uh, what is the risk of using the facade pattern? Facade pattern, you mean, uh, can I say, uh, more decoration on the facade? Because nowadays we have pins, we have we have the moving moving leaf, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I discovered some facade have reflective leaf. When the wind blow, the leaf started to move and it's very nice looking from the outside. Right. Uh, well, just imagine like this. Uh, Toyota, Toyota have a, have a philosophy, you know, that simplicity is beauty. The more parts you have, the more risk of breaking down, especially in the mass construction of building like, like our high rise building, which must be done in thirty six months, you know, according to the, to the Act one one eight, okay, uh, to the uh, Housing and Development Act, it must be done in thirty six months, regardless of how many floor you are talking about. So as a result, mistake is inevitable, <laughs> but the type of peripheral and decoration is very attractive when it comes to the image of the building so there is a pro and cons to it okay so the more decoration the more chance of failure so simplicity is beauty but nowadays we have facade that is so uh, unique looking uh, so I I cannot say for for sure, you know. but for sure the more parts the more risk. Okay, other other question. All right. Uh, moving on, we have a question from Nora Atul. Uh, what are the tolerances for facade insulation? Depend on what type of system. As mentioned to you, there are curtain wall, there are cladding wall. There are windows, you know. So, but that one is an architectural detailing. So I cannot say for sure for now, but uh, that one you need to refer to the architects in more. Like. So perhaps you need another session for this, you know. This is a very big question. <laughs> okay. 
What would the topic for that be, sir? <laughs> Uh, facade installation. That one must be uh, must be explained by an architect, uh, I think. Ah, okay. Hmm. Because they want to into think, detailing. Uh, Any other question? I think that's all the question we have for today. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Kwan again for sharing today, and uh, of course the participants for uh, tuning in. Uh, we hope to see you all in the next round. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.